City. Warmed up. Here's Clay talking to the media right now. For game five. I'm not sure if they have done the same here for game six. I have not, uh, but I know there's a lot of beautiful waters around these parts. So I'm not ruling it out, but it's probably a slim possibility. Obviously, it's about game six play. This is game six. Are you planning something special, considering you can win a championship this time? I would like to have a big night and win the game, but, you know, it doesn't matter what any of us do individually. The main goal is just to win one game. So I don't want to put any extra pressure on myself to live up to my name. I just want to go out there and play free, trust my teammates, and I know great things will happen if I do those two things. On the right, Monty. Clay, when people think game six, Clay, they always go back to the OKC game. Are you aware of your history in game sixes overall? I realize I'm on a, a really good streak right now of game sixes, and I don't know how long that will last. Hopefully, obviously tomorrow, but it's, it's uh, it's obviously a nickname I earned. I want to live up to it, but at the same time, I, I don't want to go in there and play hero ball. I'm just going to go in there and be myself and do what I've been doing the last few games, and I know that will uh, allow us to be successful. Steve said he didn't know how to make sense of it, but he said one thing is that you have killer instinct. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is that part of what's going on when you're trying to hold on a team? Yeah, I just know after doing this for so long that uh, – Killer instinct means just playing with incredible intensity, force, and will. And if you leave it all out there and you play intelligently, like that's all you can ask for yourself. And uh, try not to say, oh, I'm going to score this many points. I'm going to lock this player up. But as long as you control what you control, and that's the effort and the focus factors, it's going to be a good night for us. Thanks, Roback. Kendra Andrews, ESPN. <clears throat> um, Clay, you guys have struggled to close out series at your first opportunity so far this postseason, and Andre just said clinching is the hardest game you'll ever have to play. What makes closing out a series difficult, but then does having a championship on the line, does that get, make it even harder yeah. to close it out mentally? Uh, I don't think the championship we think about too much because – We've talked about it, like just being present, and you do yourself a disservice if you think about things that don't even exist yet. So on your first point, it is very hard to close out a series, and this is a very good team, and we know they're going to play with a sense of desperation. So for us to match that or exceed that, it's going to take the most effort we've had to give all year. But I can tell you this, we're all ready for the opportunity, and we're all very excited. Clay, Clay, from a historical perspective, you know, people probably remember this team as being, or this franchise, the Warriors being a great offensive team, revolutionizing the game. But do you feel that defense is the foundation of championship runs for this group? Yeah, I think it's a great mix of both, obviously. I mean, what gets overlooked is our versatility on that end. Uh, we have players who can guard every position, um, and we have obviously great defensive schemes as well as coaching with Mike B and the rest of the staff. They got us watching a lot of film, knowing the players' tendencies, and then we just got guys who play with great heart. So mix all those together, you got a potent mix. Anthony? You have, uh, you've had a few like kind of those quick hand steals. I was actually just talking to Andre about it. You, they're almost Iguodala-like steals. Do you feel like that's something – as you're getting older, you're getting more confident or, or doing more often, trying more often? Uh, I think I've always had hands, so. <laughs> Not to Andre's level, but, you know, I'll, I'll sneak a couple a game and hopefully that will swing the momentum most of the times I do. Nice. Good right work. here in the front. Next seat in. Um, the Celtics talks about uh, the officiating kind of getting into their head in game five, and I was just wondering how much do you guys feed off of that 
in game noticing that your opponent is unraveling or losing their composure in the way that they did? Uh, I don't think we focus on it too much, to be honest. We have a next play mentality. And um, we're just worried about, you know, getting a great shot up in those moments, not uh, what the other team's talking about. So basketball is a very continuous game. And if you're uh, out there talking to the officials the whole night, you might get in your own way. Sam, up in the right. Clay, uh, Draymond on the other side was getting reflective and talking about your guys' journey. Um, and within that, I was curious to get your perspective on coach. You know, you got the guy who took over from Mark Jackson and is getting his feet wet after being an analyst. You got the guy who, you know, shepherded the championships and the, the KD years. And, and then the last couple were, you know, waiting for you to come back, the 15 and 50 struggles. What kind of changes have you seen in, in, in Steve as a coach? Uh, I haven't seen many changes, to be honest. I think Steve's pretty much been the same since 2015. And, um, I mean, Steve's had a, such an incredible, unique career from player to coach, GM. He just uh, knows how to gel talent together. And then he draws from his playing days, which is really cool to hear him talk about playing with Mike and Scotty and the Twin Towers in San Antonio. So the man's knowledge for the game is second to none. And that's what I love being around him for. He's just, he's got so many historical examples of how to get out of sticky situations. And he's a great leader. And he uh, deserves every praise that comes his way. Tanya, last one in the back. Clay, another thing that um, Draymond was talking about was he mentioned this scene where you and Steph and he were sitting together eating at some point and uh, Bob Myers came by and was like, this is, you guys are still together, you're still sitting together. <laughs> um, just from a personal level, like, is there some, what is it about the personalities of the three of you that, you know, you, you know, obviously mesh well together on the court, but you like being around each other? Hmm. Well, I don't know about that. I owe Draymond some money in Domino's, so I don't really want to see him too many times so uh, uh that's funny that happened like two days ago and i was half asleep but draymond and bob were chatting their hearts away for six hours on a plane ride i was just trying to get some sleep <laughs> good times that's all thank you Clark.